Bless the Lord, everybody. Just so I don't have you standing and sitting, take your Bibles with me tonight and uh, go to a very familiar passage of Scripture. Amen. That you have for your theme tonight, Isaiah chapter 60, <clears throat> verses 1 through 5. If you mind standing while we're reading the name of the Lord, Jesus. Finally, say amen. Amen. Praise God. All right, let us read together. Arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen up on thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. For the Lord shall arise up on thee, and his glory shall be seen up on thee, and the Gentiles shall come to the light and kings to the brightness of their rising. Lift up thine eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together, they come to thee. Thy son shall come from far, thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thy heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee, the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. We bless you, God, for your love and your grace towards us. We thank you that thou art a rock, O God, in our hiding place, sheltered in time of storm, even our high tower, our strength, and our blessing. And we praise you tonight. We thank you for life and the opportunity to be here at this time. We praise you for this church, for this pastor, and his wife, for this congregation. O oh God, as they secure souls for the kingdom of God, helping the minds of the hearts of your people, amen, to live according to your laws, and that their lives may be enhanced. The blessings of Jesus will come upon them now. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. You may be seated. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. We have some stuff, so I won't go there tonight. Well, I stand tonight to greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. I stand also to greet Pastor Williams, Bishop Williams, and Sister Williams, and all the officers of this fine congregation, all the young people, amen, that serve this church. May God just bless you, Richard, but I want to also uh, thank God for Sister Eunice that is here with me tonight, and David. And all the brethren from Triumphant, and the Murray, Brother Reynolds, it's good to see you, man. Yeah. And uh, faith upon names, but several of them are in the congregation. Sister Kim, all the way from Newmarket. All right. God bless you to be here. Amen tonight. And all the rest of the day, God bless you. It's certainly a privilege to be here tonight, and it's been a long day. So my plan tonight is not to keep you too long. Amen. But I believe that I have a word from the Lord for you tonight. It's, it's a Jonah word uh, that I could probably just come up here and take about five minutes and say it to you. But I'm going to do as the Lord would happen to do to convince you, amen, that this is the word of God and it's right for you. Um, your 29th annual conference, we bless God for you. And 29 years has been a long time. And I remember Wilson Avenue a long time ago. Just shows you how young we are. Me and Pastor Williams. <laughs> and uh, the fact that we have been around for a while and still serving God, I think it is a testament to the fact that God is still able to keep him. And if you are determined enough to be what God wants you to be, and to show forth the praises of God, God will make a way out of no way. It just takes up a made up mind, understand that there will be obstacles sometimes, times are going to get rough sometimes, some things you're not going to understand. But uh, if you just desire, amen, to put your faith and trust in God, amen. So we had a great time of traffic this morning, I believe you do too here. And then tonight, I was sort of led to teach in a subject 
for another hour and a half, and here I am now, so take it easy with me. I'm not 25 anymore. Look at these two guys that they put up beside me here, Fisher and the other Fisher and Brother Jermaine, <laughs> young guys, you know? Amen. But uh, they said sometimes praying is a, is a lot more important than backs. But the thing about these two guys is that they got both backs and brain. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. The rest of associates, every one of you tonight, may God bless you. Is that Pastor Mars there? God bless you. God bless you. Amen. What can I say? Reverend, it's been a long journey. And um, it takes a lot of perseverance. It takes a lot of godliness in you. Amen. To continue and take on. We thank God for that. Your scripture from the book of Isaiah 60 verse 1 to 5. I'm very sure that many of you other speakers have gone through the theological impact or ratification of this scripture. And so as to keep it in context, uh, just so that you understand that this was God speaking to Israel concerning the church age, concerning the time when, amen, even though when the scripture was written, even uh, Jerusalem and the Jews were God's chosen people. And we were not even considered to be a part of that great family that God has chosen. But in the eyes of prophecy, in the eyes of the Eli prophet, he saw where God would have eventually included, included us in an, into the church. And we thank God that we're living in the age that even this prophecy can be realized in us. It further takes us, amen, to the fusing of the Gentiles and the Jews into one body called the church that God so richly recognized. I was saying to the folks at Triumphant uh, the other day that we as Gentiles uh, may not appreciate when Paul wrote in the book of Ephesians that God had taken twain and made it into one. But the Jews appreciate that. They understand that simply because the division that was between Jews and Gentiles in those days was so separated that nothing on this earth, matter of fact, we were like enemies one against the other. But when through the blood of Jesus, he can bring Gentiles and Jews and call them the church and give them a further prophecy amen, of us being in the new Jerusalem together. Uh, it brings forth harmony in the sight of Almighty God. Uh, this was a congratulation to Zion and her restoration because at the time, amen, Israel and Judah were both in captivity. And it speaks about the second advent of Jesus, or God himself, to her true position as the mother church from which the gospel was to be diffused to the whole Gentile world. If you remember the argument and the discussion of the woman at Cyprus well and Jesus, she said to Jesus, you know that the Jews have no dealings with the Gentiles, we don't mix. Amen. You call us dogs, you call us this, you tell us that you are in the plan of God, we are nothing before you. And you see the separation that was between them. So when God brought us together, amen, this was the first, amen, the time that the Gentiles and the Jews, beginning at Jerusalem, amen, depicted the earnest of this that God himself did. The language here is so glorious to apply to anything but showing forth the love of God for mankind. This could not mean the tribulation. It could not mean only the restoration of Israel. It could not only mean God's love for Jerusalem. But it had to be the greatest advent that ever happened on this earth. When Jesus Christ came into the world, yes. that even wise men from the east 
yeah. acknowledge it. Yes. Because they left what they were doing and came to Jerusalem with the richest richness of their treasures to open to the Lord God. Yes. Angels in heaven could not keep quiet. Call the mighty. Because angels begin to sing. Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth and goodwill to all men. People came from everywhere to worship this same God. And this was a glorious experience. So it brings us to the point where as people that have been brought into the church of God, it, it, it helps us, it shows us that we must arise from the dust in which we were sitting. It depicts Jerusalem then as a mourning woman. But it, it excites them showing the application of this prophecy. That we should not sit in ashes or sit in dust. When we look at the double imperative in here, arise and shine, is that shine is a result of arising. Because if you don't arise, you can't shine. this year we understand that number one, we can be enlightened in the kingdom of God, right here in this present world of sin. The church lives within a nucleus and we march after a different order. Say to the president this morning that the order of the world says if a man take one of your eyes, in return you should take out both of his eyes. The, the, the order the world, amen, is that if you despitefully use me, I put on my gun and I shoot you. But the church don't march after that order. I feel God in this way. The church said that men despitefully use you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely. The word of God said rejoice and be exceeding. Jesus came not only to bring us to the glories of glories in heaven, but he teaches us how to live righteously and soberly in this present world. Therefore, we can be enlightened by the word of God. Matter of fact, one of the said, things we used to do, we don't do them anymore. Songs we used to sing, places we used to go, and the devil is still showing you. Amen. That, that, that you're not normal in doing what you do. Because we don't run after the same riot that the world runs after. But thank God Almighty. There is a blessing to live for God. Because the company that I keep. Don't, don't bring me into condemnation. Uh, it brings me to sit in heaven. If I meet the Prime Minister, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am not excited as when I meet Bishop Williams. Uh, you probably don't believe that. But I'm excited when I meet a man of God. Uh, say to him, if your heart is hot, is as right as my heart, give me your right hand. And somewhere in there, the Spirit of Almighty God must infuse love and peace and joy and a sense of The word would speak of being resplendent yeah. with prosperity. And when we look at it tonight, we understand that the latter of the two yes. speaks about the future resulting from the former. Yes. But thou shalt be enlightened because thank God Almighty in this time the glory of the Lord is being revealed yes. among his people. The Gentiles have gotten into the church. We now have a place in God to serve God. Yes. Yes. 
very much. But my message tonight is not coming from there. I just thought to lay my foundation there because that's your topic, but I'll get that here soon. But I have a simple word for you tonight. The topic being, you will shine based on who you hang with. You will shine based on who you hang with. The story is told in the second book of Kings, chapter 2. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah was with Elisha from Gilgal. Come on now. I, I surmise here that these are two great men. Great men that were able to appreciate one another's life. Uh, men that hung together because from history it is said that during that time, for you to become a proper prophet, yes. you had to attend what they call the College of the Prophets. So Elijah, amen, was like a tutor of the college, an older man, Elisha was a student at the college. Uh, don't get me wrong here now because God had to endue them with the spirit of prophecy for them to be able to go to this college not to learn prophecy nor spirit but to learn the proper method. Now I don't want to go here tonight but something's coming to me because folks I tell you right now you can have the Holy Ghost all you want to hanging from these channels if you don't have some wisdom in what you're doing, even, even your good prophecies can go to the ground. So when I'm going to learn from studying, learn from our friends, or learn from experience, let us understand that a certain amount of knowledge is important. How can I still preach in this place? It appears as if Elijah had gotten old. And Elisha has seen in the exploit of this man. He has seen him move at Mount Carmel and said to the prophet, to the, to the, to the, to the false prophet over there, build an altar and today if God be God, serve him. He saw when the prophets of Baal called all day and all night and nothing happened. And then all of a sudden, some talkative folks begin to say, don't you know that God is going to take away your master from you? All right, all right. And Elisha quickly summed up in his mind and said, yeah, that's all right. If that's what God wants to do. But in my spirit, in my heart, Elijah, I've seen the power of God upon you. I have seen the anointing of God. Church is gonna be the church. Amen. We need some gin house. 
Don't, don't stick with me because I can gossip. I won't be in a messy deal. Don't stick with me because I know everybody else's business. Matter of fact, where I come from, they said birds of a feather. So then you go to some church, you know, you do not go ask where the quiet corner is. Sometimes come for the blessings of Almighty God. 
Don't be afraid to hang. Amen. With somebody that is going through hardship. But yet they can still bless God. They're going through hardship. They're still shouting hallelujah. They're going through hardship. They come to church. They still have a praise. Let me hurry this up. And the sons of the prophet came all the way to Jericho. People will follow you all over town. <laughs> Just to discourage you. Amen. I saw a commercial near the end of the radio from TV Bank. Everywhere this man went, yeah. this guy had his hand in his pocket. Yeah. Everywhere he went, had his hand in his pocket. Yeah. Until he went to the TV Bank and they gave him a good deal. Yes. <laughs> and the son of the prophet. That word Jericho came to Elisha yes, and said unto him, Knowest now that the Lord will take away a master from thy head today? Yes. And he answered, Yes, I know. I know. Holy peace. Sorry. And then Elisha turned to him yes. and said, Tarry, I pray thee here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. Yes. Jericho was that place that was wasted, walls fell down, ruined. Yes. But if the man of God is going there, if my mentor is going through some situation, I don't want to drop my mentor when things go bad. Yeah. Folks are like that, you know, it's alright when everything is going well. Seeing as things go a little bit around the corner, they find another friend. Am I talking to triumphant here? <laughs> See, this is a visa, right? Let me desertate this. 
out of the hill. We are we have a sister, not the lady goes home. We have a sister today in our church, folks, that is coming from the world. Where folks are called vicious. Yes. Jealousy is killing us. Yes. We can't see anybody get ahead. Yes. And what we have, we will not give to anybody else. Because yes. if we do, they're going to become better yes. than we are. What do you mean, somebody? Yes. This is the pillar and ground of the truth. Yes. This is the house of God. Yes. And if God gave his life for us, what is it I can't give to you? Elijah said, Elijah said, all right, you're that good. He said, if you can stand here and see me while I get taken away. He said, if you can stand this, he said, we can talk about it because for every echelon in God that you want to go, there's a test before you get there. And if you can't pass the test, there's no sense in me giving you a double portion. If you're going to use it, somebody else. If you're going to use it to baptize somebody else. If you're going to use it to show up on somebody else. Then you can't have it. That's right. But if you're going to do it for the glory of Almighty God and for the enforcement of the kingdom of God, then you can have it. Yeah. I look around. I say, God help that. Some double portions are not being given to some people. Because if you give it to them, they don't sit in a church next Sunday. Understand one time this guy got up in church, prayed for a sister. The sister jumped but was healed. He looked at the pastor and said, You can't touch me again. He can't touch him, but God can touch him. Because God can pull back the glory in it. Let me, let me just wrap this up here briefly. And all of a sudden, Elijah stood up and from heaven, a chariot of fire came down. The man of God had gone. The chariots of fire. And Elijah said, Where is my double portion? Where is my double portion? Look out of the chariot of fire. I can't come with you. Where is And all of a sudden, from Elijah, the man could drop. Let me write this up. Elijah, Elijah, for the first time, find himself in a dilemma. Because Elijah was not there to do for him now what he used to do before. His dilemma was he got Uh, 
got the mantle. Stand up with me. I've got, I've got the mantle. I've got the mantle. Tell the person beside you. I'm with me because I've got Jesus. I'm with me because I've got the answer. I'm with me because I've got the problem solved. Oh, shout oh, hallelujah, son. Still on this side. Oh, joy. Gotta get that over. Anybody find himself right here, right now? Got to get that over. Lord God, things are hard. I gotta get that over. Elisha picked up the mantle and said, Boy, I want to see how this thing works. You don't need Peter's Holy Ghost. You don't need Paul's Holy Ghost. You don't need Simon's Holy Ghost. You got your mentor, and you ought to try it sometime. That's the word. I got some rivers. Oh, I wish I was talking to five people. I got some rivers, Reverend, that, that, that seems all uncrossable. I got some mountains that I can't tunnel through. Say by faith in the name of 
of Jesus Christ who will not commit, but I will arise. It's time now for me to shine. It's time now for me to see the glory. It's time now for me to experience the grandeur of the power of God. Slap!
when Elijah is taken away from you, yes. you'll be strong enough yes. to be a role model yes. somebody else. Yes. Somebody may come to you, Master, I just lost my axe. Yes. It was bad! And it fell in the water. The sitting man will take a piece of stick, throw it in the water, and the iron axe will oh God, I might be something. The iron axe will begin to swim. Go away. I told the brethren today that many of us are here now because of the mercies of God. Because if we hang with Jesus, Reverend, better is yet to come. Because one of these days he said, I'm coming back for a church. We were teaching our class and I sat up with me. And we met up on something. Where this lady in this church felt very sweet and said to her pastor, Pastor, I bought me a one-way ticket to heaven. And the pastor said, pity you. You're going to be missing out on the new Jerusalem. I bought a two-way ticket. One for the first resurrection. The other one to bring me back to this earth to be in the new Jerusalem. Oh, I probably floored you with that one, right? Because you all had a one-way ticket bought, but I had a two-way ticket. Because when the new Jerusalem yes. comes from heaven, Reverend, yes. it is Jesus Christ Himself yes. that's going to embrace me on this earth in that new Jerusalem. Yes. And if you think, if you think I'm sweet now, yes. you're going to see me when the mist is rolled away. Yes. You're going to see me when the tempter is not here anymore. You're going to see me in my presence. Back and forth. All 12 stories. Back and forth. That's where we're making it from. Let's come back to Earth here tonight. Two more people. Just one more time. Two more people. Tell them, I want you to be a good role model. And if you're hang right, I'm going to hang with you. And tell somebody, I want to be a good role model. Yes. Yes. Tell somebody if you're a 